Hello Linux fans, Rob here. Welcome to Linux Quest and another episode of Cool Linux Tools. So a Linux Quest viewer by the name of Floris, and I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly, sent me a message and said, Hey Rob, check out my favorite music player. And he went on to list, you know, the reasons why he liked Quadlibit. Yep, Quadlibit. What a fun name. So uh, anyway, I decided to check it out. I'm glad that I did. Now currently, my favorite music player is Clementine. It's a QT-based app and works very well within the KDE environment. But Quadlibit has some features, and it's also not well-known, I don't believe. Um, even Flores mentioned, hey, this is not well-known. And so that was another reason I wanted to feature it on the Cool Linux Tools episode is, uh, you know, I think the more we know about some of the software options out there, the better. Now, my guess is most of you have your own favorite music media player. And, um, you know, feel free to list that in the video comment section. And, you know, certainly we'll take a look at that. Now, if you're the type of person with a huge media library, and I know people who have thousands of songs, hundreds of albums, and, uh, you know, that's not me. But if you're one of those folks who really has a huge music collection, uh, Quadlibit list here that unlike some, uh, Quadlibit will scale to libraries with tens of thousands of songs and it supports most of the features you'd expect from a modern media player. Now I'm going to go ahead and go through a few things here. We'll jump over to features and uh, I won't go through all of these. I will list the uh, link for the Quadlibit site here and you can go in and get into details about this particular uh, audio player. All right, so they have multiple audio backends with GStreamer, uh, gain support uh, for replay, so you could go in and adjust gain uh, for playback. You can apply clipping prevention, or no, the, the app will apply clipping prevention whenever available. Uh, multimedia key support, and here's one I wanted to point out, real shuffle mode that plays the whole playlist before repeating. And I have had like Android apps out of a 50 song playlist would shuffle 30 of them for whatever reason. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and skip around just a little bit. Full tag edit mode here. And then under audio library, you have a watch directory that will automatically add or remove new music, which is helpful. You can ha hide songs on removable devices, which is very useful. You also have the ability to download lyrics and save them. Uh, and you can launch into Internet Radio and Shoutcast once you've set up your account. You also can um, link into podcast audio feeds. So it's a simple interface. That's one of the things I like about it. There are not a lot of options to go in and set up, not a lot of preference settings and things like that. So that's another thing I like about it. And file support. So we'll kind of go through that. And then one other thing, and then we'll jump into the app. So you've got MP3, um, Ogvorbus. Uh, FLAC, you know, Wavepack, MPEG-4, WMA, as well as Monkey's Audio. So uh, pretty good selection there on the file support side. Now, if you're a person who likes to really dig deep in and set things up a particular way and um, you want to take the time to get your music and tags and everything, uh, you know, really set the way uh, you like, uh, then you can go into their user guide, which I think is a really nice, well-done user guide here. So here's introduction to tags, for example. Um, you know, this to me is the sign of a, of a quality app here, overview. So you can go in and just kind of uh, get a quick overview, for example. Um, audio backends on, on playback. So you'll get into custom pipelines, debugging, things like that, gapless playback. So I think, you know, very well done from the um, site perspective with a user guide here. Now, for me, I just, you know, basically launch in and, uh, you know, I didn't spend any time with user guides or anything. I just launched in to start playing music to get my library in and start playing music. Now, this is, again, a GTK-based app, but still, you know, it runs fine within the KDE environment. Looks good. Uh, you can resize your window and uh, you know minimize, maximize, just like you would with any other app. Uh, it does not for me, and it may be because I'm running with in KDE. It does not minimize to the taskbar, so I'll have to get in and take a few looks, uh, take a look around and see what's going on there. All right, so we're going to go ahead and go back into um, full screen here. Now, what we launched into is a particular view here called Album List. 
So I'm going to go through that in just a minute, but I want to start over here to the left with File. So once you're there, you can add a folder, add a file, or add a location. So if you have a server set up maybe with all of your media on it, then we'll get down here to Preferences. There's kind of uh, not a lot here that you've got to go in and do. I'm going to bounce through this pretty quickly. So under Song List, you could go in and choose Jump to Playing Song Automatically. You can adjust the visible columns, and uh, you've got some column preferences here that you can go in and set up. Under Browsers, you've got a global filter for search. You can enable one-click ratings, confirm multiple ratings. Uh, you can prefer embedded art. Uh, things like that. Under playback, you've got buffer duration, and this is where you would go in to adjust your gain uh, volume. Then under library, this is where you would go in and add a new library, rescan or rebuild your library, and then you can go in and hide songs under this uh, setting as well. And then you've got again full tag editing mode here where you can go in and adjust the rating scale. Uh, save the ratings and play accounts to uh, Quadlibit's site. So again, not a lot to do there. Uh, under Song, you're going to uh, be able to go in and edit bookmarks. I do not currently have bookmarks set up. But you simply apply a bookmark name. Also under Song, you've got Edit Tags. So the current song I have selected is Stone Temple Pilots, Cinnamon. So I could go in and edit any of these tags listed here. So if I had a huge library and I was trying to uh, go in and really set it up in a way that would let me uh, search and find what I want by tag quickly with you know things that, that uh, make sense to me, I could go in and do that here. So under Performer, for example, um, instead of Stone Temple Pilots, perhaps I'll put... Uh, Scott Whalen there, who is the uh, lead singer, or was until he passed away. Um, well, did he pass away? I believe he passed away. Um, anyway, uh, I would put his name there as opposed to Stone Temple Pilots. Now, Stone Temple Pilots, it just so happens, uh, he well, actually, he didn't sing Cinnamon. There was another lead vocalist for that. So, my example here is that under Performer, even though I'm listening to Stone Temple Pilots, they've had, I believe, three different vocalists as Scott Whalen was in and out of drug rehab. Uh, maybe that's more than you wanted to know about Stone Temple Pilots. Anyway, I say all of that because when you're getting into music and you're getting into bands, there are multiple ways that you can go in and tag things so that you can find exactly what you're looking for. In this case, Performer is one of those, so you would put the, the uh, maybe the lead vocalist name there. So you have Van Halen, for example, where you've had Sammy Hagar as lead singer, as well as David Lee Roth, for example. All right, you can tag from Path and then go in and rename that particular file as well, uh, right from there. So you could rename that. Uh, and I believe that syncs back to your library. All right, so that's about all you have under song there. Uh, you can get general information, lyrics if they are found, and any bookmarks. We'll move over to control. All you're going to see there is basically what you have here. You do have the option to stop after this song. And then under Browse, so we're going to go back to Browse here, and this is where things get interesting. So you have filter set up, and this is good, if again, if you've got a large music library. You could go in and set up particular filters on genre, album, artist, uh, random genre, random artist, random album, all songs recently played, recently added, that would be useful, and top 40. Based on the rating, of course. Uh, you could open your search library, and you could go in from there and search for a particular song. So I'm going to say DLR, for example and it pulled right up to um, the song I was looking for. So let's go ahead and see if it will launch into that. Well, I'm not getting anything, so what am I going to do there? Hmm, interesting. I found it. Let's try that again. There we go. Alright, so that that pulled up the song I was actually looking for. We'll go ahead and play a little music, why don't we? Now, you'll notice here that the album art, well, you probably can't see this, but the album art is not correct. Um, that's one of the issues I have found with this app is uh, whatever the last uh, 
photo for album art is that I've pulled in trying to adjust my album art. It applies to um, various albums within my library. So I'm going to go back into browse mode here. So we had search library, uh, playlist, and I set up a, uh, plays list, a playlist here called Cruising Tunes. And uh, very easy to set up and add. Panned browser. Now I think uh, panned browser may be good for you if you have a large library. You'll see here the year of the album. So you can see on the left under people, you'll see maybe artist. Sometimes you'll see album. Or excuse me, sometimes you'll see band. Sometimes you'll see the artist name. It depends on how things have indexed from your music library. And then on the right, you'll see the album. And so we could choose, uh, let's see here, we could choose the White Stripes, and the album will populate here at the bottom. So that may be a good view for you if you have a large library. Uh, also under Album Collection, now this would be convenient, I think, if you were setting up playlist, you would see a list of folders with all of your music. You could go in and right-click. And then from there, you could add that to a particular playlist that you've set up easily. So I think, you know, it's a good mix of views. I like the album list view, but again, here I've had issues with the album art. Now, I've got a plugin set up, and there's lots of plugins here to choose from. So I'm going to jump over to that real quick. And I'm not going to go through all the plugins, but you, if you have specific needs, and, and I see that from time to time within Linux Quest where people say, hey, I'm looking for a music player that can do this or do that. Uh, spend some time here in the plugins. And I, you know, I'm not familiar with half of these plugins or what they do, but luckily you see a description here of what the particular plugin is or what it does. Now, I've also found here that you will see errors depending on the particular plugin that you've applied and it will give you a list here of you know what it's looking for so here couldn't find gstreamer element bs2b so you may have to go in and install whatever uh, it's calling out for here uh, couldn't find kanji kana simple inverter i don't know what that is uh, but perhaps i could get that set up and i'm good to go then with that particular plugin now some of the plugins here that um, seem to work is burned a cd although i haven't burned a cd yet uh, convert encodings. I haven't tried that. The um, Let's see here. The other one that works is download album art. However, I'm having an issue where the album art does not apply, so I'll look into that. You've got equalizer here. Export as playlist. I'm just going to bounce through a few of these. Again, uh, spend some time here if you've got specific needs for your music library. Replay gain, rescan songs, rhythm box import, uh, split albums, shuffle playlists, things like that. Uh, pretty darn good selection here, I think. Uh, let's see, anything else that may stand out? There's a theme switcher here. Oh, that's handy. Let's see, Breeze. Let's go to Breeze Dark and see what that looks like. Oh, cool. Looks good. Um, we'll keep that, actually. That looks now like it's a KDE app to me um, with, with that theme applied, so that's nice. All right, so I want to bounce over here real quick and give you an example of one of the plugins, which is Download Album Art. So what will happen here is it's going to go out and just find on the web here the album art. And what you'll see is resolution being listed. That doesn't always mean it's the photo you want to go for. In some cases, what you'll pull up is where someone has taken a picture of the album cover itself and that shows where you see a, black, a background or something like that showing up. Uh, that's a pretty nice, let's see if we can get a higher res version of that. So that's pretty good. We'll go ahead and save that. And let's save that under, let's see, cover or album. Let's save that under album. And we'll go ahead and apply that. Well, wait a minute. That it didn't like album. So let's go back in. Let's save that under cover and see how that works. There we go. Now you'll see here that that has applied. And 
so far, you know, let's uh, some of some of the albums. I was curious if it would actually find it. So here's uh, White Zombie, and uh, so let's go in and see what kind of job it does there. And I think basically, if you have the correct information up here, um, it's more than likely going to find it. You know, if you've got information here that you've went in and edited and it just doesn't make sense search wise of course you're going to have a a hard time finding the uh, album cover so let's apply that now like I said where I've had issues as you see here there are lots of albums with the same cover and for whatever reason um, it's it's not saving all of the uh, album covers as it should all right, so um, there are a couple of other things I want to show you here. Um, you've got Internet Radio, and I think this is a great selection here as far as Internet Radio is concerned. It seems to work quickly. I've had mixed results with other apps and Internet Radio, and this seems to do a good job. It's uh, fast. It connects quickly as it should, uh, populates quickly, and you've got everything from alternative to indie music, to uh, talk and news down here, Turkish, Slavic, uh, rock, reggae, punk, on and on. Um, let's jump in here to some jazz and see what we find. And it's going to make a liar out of me as far as connecting quickly. Oh, there we go. Okay. So you'll see there it connects pretty fast. Um, let's go over here to some blues. See what we find here in blues. That's kind of weird music there. Commercial. There you go. Let's check out a little R&B. Sounds like a French station. Oh, that says no, that's Turkish radio. It sounds French. So some of these may be hit and miss. No, there we go. All right, so you get the idea. Uh, so again, that was under browse mode. Then you have media devices. I currently do not have anything connected, so nothing's going to show up. Now, if you have a SoundCloud account, you could go in and connect and set that up here and uh, and play through this as well. So let's look at the version number here. This is version 3.7.1. And, you know, overall, I'm impressed with this. I don't know that I would switch from Clementine to this. Uh, I'm going to spend more time with it and just see kind of what works best for me. Uh, but I wanted to make sure this was known and, um, you know, and it may have some plug-in features and things like that that you've been looking for. So uh, if you haven't heard of this, obviously there, there might be um, some worthwhile things here in this particular app that might change how you handle or allows you to handle your music in a way that you've been looking for. So hope this helps and we will check you later.